Launched in 2005, the Range Rover Sport was not really a true Range Rover and it wasn't particularly sporty. It was based on the Land Rover Discovery and even with the most powerful engine, it was fast but only in a straight line. All this changes with the introduction of the second generation. This time the car is based on the lighter Range Rover and it uses its aluminium chassis. Like the big Range Rover, also the Sport is some 300 kg lighter than its predecessor. From the outside, the Range Rover Sport looks like a blown-up Evoque, which is no bad thing. The car sits in the middle of the model range, so association with the bigger as well as with the smaller brother is normal. However, the Sport is a big car, unless you live in the Middle East, where most cars are this size. The size of the Range Rover Sport is becoming apparent when you're trying to get inside. I'm 175 centimeters tall and like in the BMW X5, it's actually quite difficult for me to climb in. And the suspension is now in its normal setting. Yes, I can lower it to make the loading a bit easier, but I can do it only from the inside. Watching people climb inside, especially shorter people, is actually quite hilarious, but I couldn't convince my mother to appear before the camera. The British know a thing or two about interiors. Compared to the old Sport, the new one is much more luxurious but without going overboard. This is a good blend of simple elegant design and functionality, even if the infotainment system is a tad slow and graphics are out of date. There is good storage, place for a bottle of water in the door bins, and there is a place for your mobile phone, as long as it's no bigger than an iPhone or it will fall out during acceleration. They could have made this one or two centimeters deeper. In the back there is good legroom and headroom, despite the glass roof. The middle seat is good for an adult. I don't like this squeaky center console, but the touch-sensitive lights are nice. The boot volume is 784 liters. There is a full-size spare under the floor, which can be replaced with a third row of seats. The tailgate is electrically operated. Gone is the additional access through the opening rear window because it was not very easy. Well, not for anyone below 190 centimeters. Before we set off, seat belts, of course, safety first. And here we come to this uh, Range Rover armrest. Yeah, I know it's a bit of Range Rover tradition, but it obstructs the seat belt buckle. So, you know, with this huge armrest here, you can get rid of that. I'll start with the terrain response system modes. There are two new modes, automatic and dynamic. Automatic mode is good on flat roads uh, where the electronic suspension can decide uh, if you need more comfort or more sport. However, if you live somewhere where the uh, roads are less than perfect, you may want to switch into dynamic mode uh, to feel the real difference between the old and the new Range Rover Sport. Suddenly it turns out that this uh, 2400 kg monster can corner fast and flat. Helping it stay on track are an active differential and torque vectoring control system. It's no Porsche Cayenne, uh, but light years separate the old Range Rover Sport from the new generation. Under the bonnet here is a 4.4 liter V8 diesel producing 335 horsepower and an asphalt rolling 700 newton meters of torque. Range Rover promises fuel consumption of uh, 8.7 liters per 100 kilometers in combined cycle. I reckon it's realistic, but uh, I was very pleased to find out that in city traffic this car can stay below 12 liters per 100 kilometers. In automatic mode, uh, the Range Rover is very comfortable and uh, also very well sound insulated, even at motorway speeds, and even at high speed it remains efficient. It is also relatively easy to maneuver uh, and you soon forget about how big it is uh, until you find a badly parked car on a narrow street. But visibility is great. I'm no expert at off-roading and I have pictures to prove it. But I guess majority of Range Rover buyers do not take their cars off-road. Which begs the question, why are they willing to pay for the sophisticated terrain response system? But since I have an off-road vehicle on my hands and there is a sandbox close by...
Okay, enough. Let's go back to civilization. Prices of the new Range Rover Sport start at around 60,000 euros for a petrol V6. The most powerful 510 horsepower V8 petrol autobiography costs almost 100 grand. This HSC Dynamic V8 diesel starts at 85 grand and has some 12 grand worth of options on it, including power and heated seats, upgraded audio system, panoramic roof, and a cross traffic detection system for reversing. You'll appreciate it in a car this size. The Range Rover Sport offers a lot of standards, so in the price department it can compete against the BMW X5. I suppose not many of you will actually take it off-road, but it can compete with the Jeep Grand Cherokee in mud and dirt. Although it's no Porsche Cayenne, for an average driver it's finally a true Range Rover. A Range Rover that deserves the Sport badge. Also watch my reviews of BMW X5 and Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to my channel. New reviews every Friday. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Google+. You'll find all the links in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.